Hello guys, so a few days ago I bought a box of Rugilac cookies and I thought uh, it would be a good practice to create them in 3D because previously I haven't created any type of food, I'm not even speaking about creating it procedurally. So in this video I will show you how to create a Rugilac cookie or whatever it's called, how to add randomization for colors, shape and how to add rigid body simulation. And yeah, let's, let me show you. So if I dive in, this is the whole node graph, this is for randomization part and this is how the main shape of the cookie was made and this is RBD simulation and the pink boxes is where coloring is applied and the main shape starts with a simple triangle and uh, it, it comes from the lab's super form formula shape and I have changed the shape selection to triangle and uh, I play around with the width and also make sure you check this option to fill the shape because by default it will be like so then I rotated this 90 degrees, then I placed it uh, on the uh, minimum of the z-axis, then I added thickness, then I have added a band with, with a huge value, play around with the table, taper, length scale, and the capture length is also I have play around, so it's dynamically changing the capture origin, capture direction, and capture length if I decide to change the shape. And the way I have done it is by using bounding box expression, so basically I am capturing the entire bounding box length in the Z axis, and this is how you can do it. So you use a bounding box expression, you access, you access the zero input, which in this case is the incoming geometry. And you tell in bounding box expression to capture the entire length of the bounding box in the Z axis. And same for this. Then I'm scaling it down and also rotating it because by default it will be like so. And uh, I want I wanted to the steep to be on the top, and then I have added a point jitter, just a slight variation in shape, then I blurred it a little bit, point position, and scale it down, and added a null to reference it slightly. Next up is a box shape, uh, I have added a switch to use a circle or boxy type of shape, and I have added a group to select a top face by using a keep by normals option, so you need to uncheck the base group and enable it by normals, and I change the direction to positive y, and spread angle to one, so it only selects the top face. And uh, after that, I have used this group for the poly extrude insert, which is this insert, insert. And also, I have exported the front group, which I will be using in the next poly extrude, which is this one. I have also referenced it here. So, copy parameter and then paste well to reference. And uh, under the distance option, I have used also again bounding box expression. So what it means is that it will uh, capture the minimum distance of the bounding box, incoming geometry in bounding box, and it will multiply by 0.8. And what this expression does is that if I increase the height of the box, the extrusion will, will remain the same, as you can see here. So this is what this expression does. And then I'm polybubbling it. Then I'm using a match size to place it on the uh, on the top of the world origin. Then I added a null for the box collision, and then I have a subdiv subdivide node. And uh, to procedurally scatter cookies inside of the box area, not somewhere outside of the box. Uh, again, we can use this. Uh, we can use this top face, which was selected by the group, and then we can blast it away and only keep it. Then we can use a poly expand to D to play around with the offset and uncheck keep outside. So now this is where cookies will appear. And after that, I, I have added a match size and also uh, used the object merge and re uh, add a reference from this box collision node. And the reason I have used the object merge is because I have plugged it into the second input of the match size, which is used to match this bounding box to this uh, geometry. Uh, so by default, it was like so, was in the center of the bounding box from this geometry. And I'm telling to move it to the top of the bounding box and then add a little bit of offset so it floats on top of the bounding box. Next, uh, I have added a scatter node, which is a number of cookies to spawn, and the first total amount, total count is the amount of cookies to spawn. Global seed is the placement of those, of those cookies, and you can play around with the relaxed iteration and other parameters. Then I have added an attribute adjust float to control the p scale. Uh, the reason I have used it instead of attribute randomize. Uh, is because uh, in attribute randomize you only have a minimum and maximum as well as a global seed. But when using attribute float adjust, it's a new node. It's a node that combines a lot of functionality which attribute randomize doesn't have right now. So what I mean by that is that you can add a minimum and maximum, and you can also add uh, outliers as well as you can randomize seed 
as I said, and you just have a lot of options. You can add the noise, you have a lot more control here. And uh, then I have a attribute color, color adjust, which is basically a color variation, which was driven, uh, and I have set the pattern type to random, and this color ramp, which colors to apply to the shape, and with this seed, I can randomize them. As well as I can change the hue, saturation, contrast, gain, and gamma, and I have this switch to enable disable coloring. And then uh, I'm copying cookies to this scatter points. And then I have the copy and transform, and uh, I moved them up a little bit in the y axis, which is basically to add more cookies. And right after that, I have used a for each connected piece loop. So basically to iterate over each cookie and I placed it in the world origin instead of deforming it in, in, in its current location I have changed its location to the world origin and under the match size I have checked the stash transform which is basically to store its transformation and uh, after all of the deformation uh, I have added another match size uh, and I have checked uh, this restore transform which basically moves to its original place all of the deformation happens using the band swap uh, I have checked the deform in both directions. All I am doing here is that I'm remapping random values from the iteration number to the values I'm uh, I'm interested in. Is first of all I'm accessing the iteration number, then I'm randomizing this iteration number, and then I'm remapping this random value from the iteration number to whatever value I want. And the same thing I'm doing here. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all for the. And uh, right after that, when all of the deformation happens, I'm using I'm, start, uh, I'm plugging this geometry into the RBD simulation, and this is the result. And the reason is fast is because um, I'm not using a concave collision shape, but I'm using a con convex hole, and the collision type is set to static. And I uh, play around with the collision padding, but basically as low as the value, the closer to each other cookies will be, and same uh, and uh, same for the collision padding for the box itself. And uh, to create collision from the box, from this box, uh, I have used a divide node, used the uh, breaker polygons, and then I have used the uh, convex decomposition node, and I lowered the max concavity to this value. And also thank you for Chris Kanya, uh, I, hope I, I hope I pronounced it correctly, because this is a person from whom I learned about this node, as previously I didn't know about this node existence. With this node, uh, you can create this type of weird looking geometry and then you plug it into into the collision geometry and now you have a concave representation as far as i understand uh, and after that i have added a time shift which was basically an output frame number which will which will be used inside of unreal or unity if you are using unity uh, because uh, inside the game engines you don't have this timeline option and uh, then i have added a white powder which is again a compile block i'm iterating over each of these cookies and I'm using the mask by feature, so the red area is where the powder will be added. And then I'm randomizing this mask by using the noise, and also accessing the iteration number from the for each loop by randomizing the offset on every cookie, so it not looks the same on all of them. And then I'm using the attribute color adjust to add the color, and uh, to add sugar, uh, the process will mostly the same. So you create a mask for all of all of the cookies here and then i have used the uh, scatter and align and uh, i'm using this mask on the the density attribute for the under the uh, scatter line which is basically the mask via to add points stuff like that and uh, i'm uh, added this big crystal scatter line to the second input which is a constrained constrained point cloud and what it means is that with uh, these uh, smaller crystals will avoid constrained points so uh, smaller crystals will not be spawned where these points already placed and after that, I'm merging everything together. And uh, to add gem, I have uh, also again using a compile block because it speed up the process quite a bit. So uh, I'm, I'm iterating over each of this cookie. And uh, first of all, but before that, I have blasted this group, uh, which is a side group from cookies, which comes from the uh, this polyextra thickness. And I have exposed the side group. And also, this is the reason I have used this group copy in the first compile the game block and this is uh, pretty much where the gem will be placed so first of all i'm scattering points on this group then i'm using a vdb from particles then i'm using a vdb smooth then i'm using a vdb con convert to convert it back to polygons and then i'm deleting small parts with the uh, labs delete small parts as you can see 
this part and you can play around with this value and uh, you need to change the mode to pyramid perimeter and then i'm color it and then uh, basically i'm adding a offset a random offset to this color and then i'm grouping gem which i have it actually used and then added a switch to my will disable it and uh, for example if i enable it this is the result we'll have and then i'm coloring box pretty similar to the cookie adding ambient occlusion edge, edge highlight uh, deleting uh, my sketch fields, adding normals, merging with the cookies, uh, cleaning geometry, keeping only color normals and UVs. Then uh, I have added the Unreal Nanite attribute, uh, which is basically enable Nanite by default when the object will be baked inside of uh, Unreal Engine with the Houdini Engine. And this is what I mean by that. So this is uh, a Nanite geometry after baking the object. And finally, I have added a collision geometry by adding a group name, which is called rendered collision geo. So Houdini engine and Unreal engine will recognize it as a collision geometry. So yeah, this is how you can create a rookie like cookie or whatever it's called. And if you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a like if you want to see videos similar to this. Have a lot of joy. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.